In a well-designed course, students will spend as much time actually practicing as possible. Also, in a well-designed course, students will know at all times where they've been, where they are now, and how far they have yet to go. Well, a powerful tool for accomplishing this is the course map. A course map, as you know, is just a picture of the entire course that shows all of the modules, lessons, or units. It shows what students will be learning, and it shows them the options that they're going to have in the sequencing of their efforts. You've been working from a course map uh, since the beginning of this workshop, so you know what they're all about, and you know how to use them. I just want to show you how flexible they can be and to offer a suggestion or two that uh, may help you to organize your own. The purpose of a course map is to put into practice as many course procedures as is possible, so long as you don't put so many course procedures into it that it's confusing or, or frustrating for the student to, to use. Let me show you some examples of uh, some course maps. Here is a course map from our uh, instructional module development workshop. As you can see in this uh, map, there is only one option here at the beginning. Students can move to this module or to that module. From then on, throughout the remainder of the course, it is just a sequence of units to complete. There's uh, a reason for that. That's the way the uh, content of the course works out, and that's the way practice ought to happen, uh, and uh, there's no need to go into that any further at, uh, at this time. Here's uh, another example. Now, in this map, you notice that there is a dotted line across the map. What this means is that the students are expected to complete all of the modules underneath the line before attempting any of the modules above the line. So a dotted line is one way of putting into practice the rule that says don't move past this point until you've completed everything uh, uh, in sight. Here's uh, yet another example. Notice that in this map, there is an introduction or orientation session. This one is shaded so that the students uh, can see that this is not a unit with an objective and a skill check. Notice also that once that unit is completed, there are several options. They can move into any one of these units, and then they move up on through the remainder of the course. Now, there's a number of uh, uh, ways in which you can express the uh, course procedures on a course map. Let me show you a, an example or two. Suppose that you want to apply the course procedure, don't go any farther until you have accomplished uh, these objectives. Well, as you've already seen, what we could do is we could put a dotted line across the map in this fashion, or we could use a solid line. Uh, suppose you wanted to put the course procedure into practice that says, don't, uh, uh, don't begin this module until you've checked with a course manager. Well, suppose you put a, a big black dot beside the module and then tell students at the beginning of the course that whenever you run into a dot, uh, check with the course manager before you begin that module. Uh, suppose that you wanted to indicate which modules included group sessions. Well, one thing you might do is you might change the shape of the, uh, the symbol for a module so the students will know that whenever they run into a, a rectangle, there will be a group session uh, in that particular module. I remember a workshop or a course for students 
that uh, were learning at very remote locations. They were learning at remote banks. And the course map for that course had two heavy lines across it. And the first one said workshop number one, and the second one said workshop number two. And what that meant to the student was that they needed to complete all of the units beneath the line that says workshop number one before they were eligible or qualified to travel to San Francisco for a three-day uh, clump of group sessions. And then they needed to complete all of these units beneath the second line before they were qualified to uh, again return to San Francisco for uh, another set of group sessions and practice and a little carousing. Now let's talk about uh, how to do it. The drafting of a course map begins with the hierarchy. So collect your hierarchy and your course scenario. Or you've already got your hierarchy on stickies, which is, uh, which is a good idea because it will make it easier to move the stickies around. So collect those items and first ask yourself whether uh, there's going to be some special event at the beginning of the course. How will the course begin? Will there be some kind of an orientation unit as there is in this course? How will students know where to begin? Will there be an arrow pointing to, to the spot uh, that starts them off? Uh, and then where should they go? Now, look at each pair of parallel skills. In other words, skills that can be learned in any order. Uh, here's an example. These two skills can be learned in any order. Ask yourself whether there's some reason why students should attack one of them before they attack the other one. It may well be that you've got some equipment constraints. It may well be that you have some locations uh, constraints. Maybe the students uh, to practice one of these modules would have to travel all the way across town to the practice equipment. What other reason might there be for moving this unit down or the other unit up? Maybe group practice is going to be a reason for uh, uh, moving those stickies around. So then after you have done that with each pair, thought about the constraints and the reasons that you might have for uh, asking students to move into one unit before the other, then move them around on your map uh, to reflect that. Finally, draw your uh, lines between the units, as you've seen on uh, our map and on other maps, uh, to depict the relationships and the constraints that the students will have as they uh, work their way through the course. Now, even though your map is going to change uh, throughout the development process, it will give you a useful blueprint from which to work. And it will help you see the big picture of the course. And it will provide clear guidance to the developers.